What do you reckon? Nice big empty anatomy space with bright light coming through the windows, just how we like it. But there's nothing in here. If there's nothing in here, what on earth can I possibly be talking about today? I'm going to talk about the basics. We've done 150 odd videos. I'm almost up to three years of putting a video out every week without fail on some anatomical topic or another. And we're going to go back to the basics. We're going to talk about the anatomical position, planes, uh, descriptive terms of one structure relative to another, things like that, the language. So the anatomical position is feet slightly apart but parallel, pointing forwards, standing up, hands by your sides and forearms supinated, so your palms are facing forward and then looking forward. Uh, and that gives us a default position from which to compare, to describe one structure to another. If, if, a, if anatomy is about description, is about describing something to somebody else using a language, this gives us a default position by which we can describe something clearly to somebody else or write something down. So planes then, planes describe cutting a section through the body. If you were to cut the body up into nice neat bits or look at a section in MR or a CT scan. So this is a very important idea. Um, first, sagittal plane. So the sagittal plane is if an archer has fired an arrow into the body, Sagittarius, the archer, right? So a sagittal plane is a plane on this direction, also gets called the anteroposterior plane. And then we have a special version, we have the mid-sagittal plane, which is in the midline. Um, this also gets called the median plane, so the mid-sagittal plane is right down the midline. And then we have a transverse plane which is cut in a section in this direction, which also gets called the axial plane or transaxial plane. I think radiologists like that term. Um, so, ba -bum, ba -bum. so the other axis then is this axis. So this would be the coronal plane or the frontal plane. Coronal, like a crown. So the coronal plane is then running down like this. All right, so that's the coronal plane. So those are the three main planes. Um, it works really well for the body, it kind of changes a bit when you get to the limbs. For example, uh, the median plane in the, in the upper limb, well in the hand, it goes through the third finger, for example. And we can describe things relative to that. Any other plane, not on those nice, neat X, Y, Z axes, would be an oblique plane. So if you cut an oblique angle through the body, that would be an oblique plane. And then from the anatomical position, we can use terms to describe how something is relative to another. For example, my head is superior to my neck. My neck is inferior to my head, above and below, right? Uh, in the anatomical position. We might also say cranial and caudal. Cranial towards the head, caudal towards the tail. So my, my navel is caudal to my sternum. My sternum is cranial to my navel. And then we have uh, medial and lateral. So closest to the midline, we say something is medial. Further away, we say that it's lateral. So we might say that my uh, clavicle extends laterally from my sternum, which is medial. Uh, and then we have anterior, posterior. So anterior, posterior. So the sternum is anterior to the vertebrae, the vertebrae are posterior to the sternum, quite a long way posterior. Uh, and that's interchangeable with uh, ventral and dorsal, ventral, dorsal. So in the anatomical position then, the palm of the hand is, is ventral and the back of the hand is dorsal. Um, this also gets called the palmar surface. It does break down a bit. This is the dorsum of the foot. So, you know, and then we have uh, superficial and deep. So we've got to think in three dimensions now. Um, my skin is superficial, my organs are deep. So I have a superficial layer of skin and deep to the skin is a layer of fascia and layers of muscle. Superficial to the muscles of my abdomen are fascia and skin. Does that make sense? Superficial and deep. So that, that works in both directions, you know, all around the body. You work your way from superficial to deep. And then a personal favourite, we have proximal and distal. Works well with the limbs, this one. So my limb extends out of there. So the fingers are distal, the distal ends of my limb, whereas my humerus 
is, is proximal to my radius and ulna. My ulna and radius bones are distal to my humerus. Thing is, we can use this for other things like the GI tract. If you think about the GI tract as a continuous tract flowing all the way through us, the esophagus is proximal to the stomach. The stomach is distal to the esophagus. The colon is distal to the small intestine, etc. Neat, huh? And lastly, we've got movements. And this isn't going to be an exhaustive description of all the terms we use, just an introduction. But we have flexion and extension. So that's flexion here and extension here. Same with the knee. So that's extension and flexion. So extension and flexion at a joint. Then we have abduction to take away from the midline and adduction. This works with the fingers as well. If we consider that being the midline, we have abduction of the fingers and adduction of the fingers. And then we can rotate things as well. For example, the humerus. So we can rotate the humerus, right? So this would be medial or internal rotation. And this would be external or lateral rotation. Internal rotation, external rotation. Um, same with the femur. And when we finally start adding these movements up, we call this circumduction of these ball and socket joints. Some parts of the body have special movements like you can protract your scapula and retract your scapula. You can protrude your mandible and retrude your mandible. And we've talked about those things when we've talked about those parts of the body. So we've introduced those terms in the important areas where we use them. And we've already talked about in the anatomical position, supination and pronation. So supination of the forearms and pronation. Kind of works in the ankle as well, but we, we tend to call it inversion and eversion. But that's for foot topic stuff. There you go. Basic terminology to stand you in good stead for reading about anatomy, talking about anatomy and understanding anatomy in general. Off you go then. Uh, we should start filling this lab full of stuff soon, right?